Hello, YouTube, Prof Sales. What's up, everybody? We are live and on the internet. So, hey, it is Wednesday, October 5th, 2016. We'll do a quick sound check. As soon as the stream comes up, it should be any moment now, just to make sure we sound good. Wednesday, October. Sounds good to me. How is everyone doing out there in YouTube land? We already have some people filling into the room, so that's cool. Um, it is day 79 of the challenge I'm in, so was unable to do a show yesterday. Just got too busy with other stuff, not even reselling stuff. It was just, I don't know, the day got away from me yesterday. <clears throat> so... Hopefully you guys are having a great couple days. I know we haven't spoken since um, Monday, so I will, got, I will update you on everything that's going on. And um, how's everyone's week going? Crafty says, let's see who else is in the room. Crafty's in the room. Michael, Susanna, what's up, Henry? Thanks for fun. Spiky, King, Flip, uh, and that's just the ones I see. So, and Crafty says, testing electronics and for and and photography yeah nice <clears throat> i would like to sell more of that too sometimes but man that testing part is just like ah uh, i don't know how to test some of it but um you know it's just a it's a nice niche to get into photography and plus it's just kind of some cool old stuff you can find and so on um karen just left she was behind me uh, doing some photographs, but she just walked out of the room because she's got some things she's got to do over the next little bit, but she says hello to everyone. 17 people already in the room. That is awesome. Thank you guys for that. Man, that filled up pretty quick. And, uh, you know, whenever I send out the link, if you don't mind sharing it with people, I'd appreciate it. It's always cool to get new people in the community and um, seeing if we can get new opinions, new perspectives, new ideas, all those good things. Yvonne, Yvette came in the room as well. Hey, guys, what's up? And Matt R. has also joined us. So, awesome. Well, I hope you guys are doing well. Sounds like sounds like at least some of you are, the ones I heard from. Um, things are going well here. We, we are in the middle of list, list, listing, basically, for this challenge and so on. And, you know... I'm finding I just can't list enough. <laughs> it just it just takes so many just to get up to these numbers. And, but sales have been really great. Um, I can, man. I, I hope the first, I hope the first four days of this month are representative of what all 31 days will be because it's been terrific. Great sales. Um, you know, busting through records. Lots of different brands are selling, which is which is cool. Um, I, I came up, Karn and I, we, I might share some of this with you guys. Karn and I, we came up with a, I don't know what, I don't know what the word is. We just came up with some thoughts about how to figure out how well we source at certain stores and so, and so on. So I did a little work last night in coming up with a, a little bit, a few metrics on that, just kind of figuring out, you know, what we're, what our stores are giving us. And it was kind of surprising. Like we started putting in all the stores that were close to us, as well as some of the ones we traveled out to. And we broke it down into jeans that we were able to get at each store versus <clears throat> not jeans, everything else. And um, it's surprising. We, you know, a couple of the, the most interesting thing I found, guys, and this is really weird, is that um, the store that's right beside us, we have a Goodwill that's, one mile away we literally could walk to it it is our worst store for jeans <laughs> isn't that the way it goes right the the closest store to you is the worst store you could have for um jeans or for what you need so that was kind of interesting because we always think to ourselves oh we'll just hit that one whenever we can go out and hit it whenever but our, our trips there and maybe we've made too many trips i don't know but we're not averaging very many jeans per trip at that store Numbers that almost don't make it worth it, but maybe going once every two or three weeks instead of, you know, once every week or so. But um, it's kind of interesting. 
I'll show you guys some of that. Let me see if I can pull that up for a moment. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. <clears throat> uh, okay, so I'm going to do a quick screen share. I know we don't normally go this quick into it, but not for the – this won't be all the results. It'll just be for this particular part of the show. So let me show you, what, guys, what I'm talking about. This is this, this is the screen I created yesterday, and – we, we are in the southern Piedmont region, you can see right here, of Goodwill. And these are some of the stores here in Charlotte and so on. And over here in this column, you see this is the number of visits we've made to each store and then the total number of items we've sourced. This is all really easy to put in because when I'm putting in what I've bought, which you know you have to track anyway for your business, I'm able to enter this information very quickly so it doesn't really take any extra time. Um, this is what I spent on uh, non-jeans items, the average spent on each item, the items per trip, and these are the jeans I've sourced at each one. So you can see like this store is South Boulevard, and if you live here in Charlotte, you know this store, 128 jeans, quite a few jeans there. And and this, this list goes back to about May of this year. I haven't really got, taken it any further back than that. It's a little bit time consuming to put this in the first time, but ongoing it'll be pretty simple. And you can see some other stores here, 60 here, 38, 26. And then over here, what I have, I'm going to scroll over, is this column right here, the column L, tells you how many jeans per trip. So on average, um, See if I can pull this back over. So like this store is a Huntersville store. On average, we get 19 jeans out of that store. Now, I've only got one visit in here, so that doesn't really mean much. South Boulevard, on the other hand, we get 18.3 jeans per hunt. Don't you love that point three, right? I'm such a nerd when it comes to math. Um, and we've gone there seven times since um, May, <clears throat> basically. You know, not too many. And this store 17 and 15, but basically this tells you, you know, how much you're likely to get when you go to a store. So, you know, I can kind of plan my week and say, all right, I need to, I'm going to try to get 70 jeans today. If I go to these five stores, will I hit that number? And I can look and say, all right, well, if I go to these five stores, you know, that's 17, um, 32, 47, 60, 71. So if I go to those five stores, let's just say that's, what my plan is for the day, I'm likely on average to get about 70, 71 jeans. You know, I mean, it's the kind of information like when you're doing volume like this, I think you have to have a, a realistic expectation. The only thing this doesn't show you so far is like how often you should go. Now, that's kind of another question altogether. Obviously, if I go to those five stores every day, I'm not going to pull 70 jeans out of them every day, right? They need a little time to you know, get new inventory in, rotate the old, and so on. But I just thought it was pretty cool. I mean, you could do this with any item, not just jeans. You could do it with anything that you're buying in bulk or you're buying in volume, and um, or you when you go to a several different locations. You can see we have a lot of other locations here. Some of these are outside of our area. <clears throat> Some of these are in other regions, and we haven't really done too much with those yet and but when we go back to those regions we'll at least have an idea all right last time this store was pretty good like when we go back to this store which i think is in the triad region which is uh raleigh and durham and chapel hill we pulled 27 jeans out of there now you know maybe that's a one-off and we just got lucky but you know chances are if we go back to that store it's probably going to get pretty pretty good this store, on the other hand, we only pulled seven out of. Maybe it was a bad day. Maybe it was a good day. I don't know. But it may be a store we hit again, maybe once or twice more just to try, or if it's on the way to maybe another store we're in that area. But we wouldn't maybe make a separate trip for that store. This one's probably decent, 14, you know, who knows. Plus, we found some other hard goods in that store as well. You know, it tells you guys, you know, kind of what, how the donations are dropped off and moved around in your area. I know my stores here in the Southern Piedmont, I know they do move donations around. So what you find at one store is not always going to be the same, but you know, over time you start to see trends and you start to see if, you know, stores are really good or not. Like this store, 
and I'm giving away all my sweet spots here, right? This store has been pretty good for jeans, about 20 per trip. We've been there three times since um, since May, I think. So pretty good. You know, if I can go into a store and pull 20 jeans out each time, I'm pretty happy. But this store is a little distance away from us. This is like a, a 35 minute drive probably. So it's not going to be a store we would just go to and come straight back. That probably doesn't make sense. We'd have to combine it with other trips, and that's what we've done. So anyway, you guys know I'm a nerd about numbers and so on. So I just want to share all that with you um, just to show you what I do in my spare time when I'm, uh, you know, whatever. Anyway, um, let's see what else is going on in the chat here. Henry says he picked up two new with Tag Beverly Hills Polo Clubs made, or Polo Club XL made in Jordan, pay $6.99. Uh, uh, fun says, do you think this spreadsheet is superfluous and taking away from listing time? I mean, do you really, uh, refer to it frequently? Just curious. Don't mean it really because product stocks at, at thrifts can be so random. Um, that's the funny thing, fun stuff. It's because they're random that when you have numbers, you can make good decisions because here's the, here's the problem. If I told you, you could step into a store and pull enough product out to make three hundred dollars. Would you do it? On and you're going to be there an hour. You probably would, right? That's a pretty good profit for one hour's work. Let's just say. What about if I told you it was only fifty dollars? Now it starts getting a little more problematic because you're going to have to put in an hour in the store and plus some time outside of it. What about if it's a hundred and twelve dollars? You know, my, my point is, is like you're not going to know what you're going to get out of a store unless you kind of keep track of it. Now you can't keep track of a yard sale or an estate sale because that's a one-off. But as Mark says, I noticed jeans aren't, jeans are not random. They're not. And you know what else is not random that would be in say a Goodwill or a Savers? Things like, um, uh, it shirts, maybe even coats, blouses, other types of pants, maybe ties. If you're into that sort of thing, shoes to some degree, because, because of where the stores are, that dictates who drops off. Here's what's interesting. <clears throat> the South Boulevard store, which is a decent store here in Charlotte, is not in a highly affluent area by any stretch of the imagination. The, the demographic around there is not one of a lot of wealth. But that store is on the way for a lot of people who are driving in and out of the city. So my contention is that some people are going up and down that street and dropping off there. Now, could it just be that Goodwill's moving jeans there? Possible, but not really that likely that they're moving inventory around that much. It's expensive to move inventory around. You really only do that when a store is really low and another store is really overstocked. That's when you move inventory. It's just too expensive to keep doing that on too much of a basis. So they're basically relying on the donations they get at that individual store to fill their shelves. That particular store, for whatever reason, gets a lot of brands dropped off that I like to buy. There's a couple other stores like that. The store in Concord is sort of like that. There's a couple others that are decent. But then it comes down to timing too. The point is, uh, fun, is that no, you're not going to sit there and stare at that spreadsheet for hours and try to figure out exactly how to do your, you know, be have an impact on your business. But what you will look at is, if I've only got five hours to source this weekend, or this week, where's the best bang for my buck going to come from? You may think you know, but unless you have some sort of data to prove it, you don't because you're just guessing because we have this tendency guys to remember certain things. We remember like bad events, like things are really bad. Like we go to a store and we get nothing. That's happened to us one time. We went to a store up in Winston Salem, car and I, and we got zero jeans out of it. Zero. That's the first time that's ever happened. And we also remember when we get massive numbers out of it, uh, you know, we do massively well, but it's really all the times in between that kind of make or break your business when you're doing a business like jeans. So you have to think about where can I kind of go on average? If I've only got time to go to this many stores this week, where should I go? And also, you know, how often should I go to a store? That's another great question. And Mark, you run into this, I know, because you sell jeans. How often should you go? How long should you give that store to kind of recharge? Because we learned that lesson two days ago. 
We went to a store um, a, about 12 days ago, and we pulled 30 pair of jeans out of it to sell. That's a good number. That's a really good number. We went to it two days ago, which was about a week or so later. We got six. <laughs> That's a big drop from 30 to six. Like six almost wasn't really worth it to go, if you get what I'm saying. But but we didn't know, you know, exactly what the timing was on that store. Now we kind of know, all right, a week is not really enough time for that store probably to recharge. It probably needs two weeks or even three weeks. But, and so now we know that, and we can make a better decision next time. And by the way, we wasted, I won't say wasted, because it wasn't total waste. We did get some jeans out of it, but we spent that probably took an hour and 15 minutes of our day to go there, get the jeans and, and go to the next stop. You know, I mean, that's an hour and 15 minutes we could have spent somewhere else, honestly, and be more productive. But we didn't know that until we tried it and then we found out. So I don't know. I think data is always good if you use it the right way, if it makes sense. And sometimes you're going to you're going to keep track of certain things. And it's not going to matter and you're going to discard it. Other times you're going to realize you don't know enough about, you know, where you get things. I mean, if you look at, you know, like my, one of my favorite shows, The Prophet, on CNBC, and he is all about you have to know your your numbers, you have to know your metrics, you have to know your cost, you have to know your profitability, you have to figure out ways to be leaner and and make and make a better profit. And the only way you do that is you start from positioning you know and you know your numbers to start with. I think a lot of resellers who want to become full time don't realize that that's part of it. Is um is you have you have to go in and know your numbers. Um, so anyway, all right, enough of that. All right, let me see if the other, there was a few questions I think I probably missed. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. I noticed the goodwill around here once a week is good. They rotate. Um, yep. Let's see. Uh, Yvonne says, what do you two do to learn new gene trends and labels? That's a great question, Yvonne. I don't think anyone's ever asked that. Well, the biggest part of it is going out and... Karin is better at it than me by like a factor of a hundred. I am such a, a label snob. If I don't see a brand that I know has been selling, I tend to skip it unless it really catches my eye. But she's really good at finding ones that we haven't sold before. Like, um, you know, like the ones the other day, the, uh, the Quackery Factory that sold. <laughs> Did I tell you guys that? The Quackery Factory gene sold. I think that was last night. So I guess I didn't tell you or sometime yesterday, I would have never even picked that up, but she thought it looked cool and or different, and you know what? She was right. So we are, we're always, there's just so many gene labels out there and brands, uh, you will never, you will never know them all. I don't care how good you are. Man, there are just, it's seemingly there's hundreds, but um, that's, all, that's the biggest thing we do. I don't really spend a lot of time on eBay researching them now. I tend to do the research in the field, in the moment, just because I'm the kind, it's like I'd rather see it in my hand and then go look for it if, if it's something new that I haven't looked up before because I know all the big brands on eBay now, the ones that have the most listings. So now we're talking about niche brands that you know have 100 listings or 200 listings, not, not the biggies like a Levi's or American Eagle. So I will look for those while I'm out in the field, not so much when I'm you know, at home and if I see them, I will check them out. If they look like they're quality or something different or they're made like, you know, in Europe, for instance, you're not a state. So those are always good signals to look. Um, that's how I do it. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, Mark says there's a story in Philadelphia or a store in Philadelphia that's in a not so good neighborhood. and I always can get 20 pair once a week. That's awesome, man. I mean, that's think about what you just said there, Mark. That store is providing you a thousand pair of jeans a year. <laughs> to put that in context, right? Twenty a week. That's just over a thousand a year. So, man, that's huge. You're going to pull a thousand jeans a year out of that store. I mean, but you wouldn't know that if you didn't take notice of it, or at least have some idea that hey, this store is great, and you took a chance to go there in the first place. Obviously. Um. So let's see what else is going on here. Mike says, big thing to do is pay attention to what people are wearing. Yep. 
And that's where you end up staring at people's butts every time they walk by you in jeans. It's what we jean resellers do. Mike, Mark, you guys do it. I know you do. You're staring at their butt to see what kind of jeans they're wearing. Um, it's a little disturbing on some level, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, <clears throat> Yvonne says, my favorite Goodwill, I'll keep one eye on the new racks coming out about every 20 minutes, and they let us go through them first. That's cool. Yeah, I do that too, Yvonne, but since I'm only looking for jeans, I will. it's only like five to maybe 10 pair of jeans on a rack at most when they pull it out. So I can go through that in just like a few seconds. doesn't take long. So I don't wait for them to send out a new rack, but if I see them pull out one while I'm in there, of course I'll look at it. Uh, <clears throat> yep, old lady brands sell well. <laughs> they sure do. Ariat are my favorite to wear. Oh, yeah. Ariat are uh, Ariat. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. I feel like Steve Rake and never pronouncing things correctly. Sorry, Steve, if you're watching. Just messing with you, man. <laughs> Um, Susanna says, I'm a label snob, but if I see something exceptionally well made or bold looking, I'll pick it up and give it a go. Yep. I agree 100%, Susanna. That is, that's exactly what you have to do. Sometimes you kind of have to believe that there's a buyer for it because you're not going to see a whole lot of information on eBay about it. Um, just depending on the brand, there just may not be a lot. Like when I bought those Hiltel jeans a while back, they're a German brand. Um, I've only ever found one, and I think eBay only had like two listings at the time, or five listings. It was, maybe I was thinking sold. I don't remember, but it wasn't many. I was like, you know what, I'm going to try them, and they sold, so who knows. But they were German, and I'm like, ah, that's kind of unusual. You know, you don't see a lot of German-made uh, jeans in the United States. Um, Mark says he hits the Goodwill. He hits each one once a week and away and pay every day. Yep. That's that's cool. I mean that and that fits in with his business model. He's selling a little bit lower price point, so the way and pay makes a lot of sense. Uh, and Yvonne says she checks solds and Pinterest and magazines to see what is up nationwide. Yep, yep, that makes sense. And you know, Yvonne, there too. That's interesting because you know, and sometimes the market takes a little bit of time to catch up to that. You know. I don't know, like if a brand new brand, a brand new brand comes out, there's not going to be a lot of used inventory right away. It's going to take, you know, a few months before that happens. And then you'll, you'll see some of it hit the stores and so on. Uh, Mark reads a lot about jeans. Yeah, I know. Right. I don't read as much now as I used to, and I should read more. <clears throat> Mike says he's starting to buy very distressed men's boys, 80s jeans and turning them into women's high rise shorts or old mom jeans. This, this could be something new here, like Denim by Mike, you know, or, or PM Denim. I don't know. You need to think of a name. If you use those, you got to give me credit now. Um, a lot of girls wear American Eagle. Yep, they do. Susanna stares at men's butts, but also women's, but it's all research. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, young chicks love the mom look from the 80s. All right. Okay. True religion's the best. It is old, old pal. True religion's great, but you're not going to find them in the numbers you really need if you want to make a sustainable business, not used or pre-owned. Um, you're just not going to find enough of them unless you just find some huge selection of them somewhere, which just doesn't make sense. I don't know what the numbers are, but if you look through a thousand pair of jeans, I'd be surprised if you found five. I'd be I'd be kind of surprised if you found five true religions pre-owned in a thousand pair of jeans because a thousand pair of jeans is really only maybe you know a couple stores worth of jeans. I don't even know that you'll find five, so I, it's just not just not that common. At least here in my area, I don't know about your area. <clears throat> Utah says, do you look in high income or low income areas or in between? Um, Utah, you got to look at you got to look at all of that. I mean, it doesn't. Sometimes it's like I was saying earlier, it's not just about the income around the store. It's maybe people pass through and drop off at that area. Um, you know, I have a store near me that's in a high income area and it's not been great for jeans at all. Um, it's one of my worst stores. So go figure that. But all things considered, you want at least, you know, check every store at least a few times in your area because you just don't know. How, what kind of stock it's going to have, but until you go try. Um, Crafty says, 
I sell many jeans, but mostly oversized plus 44. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, Yvonne says, will you recap real quick why I chose jeans for the project? Sure, a couple reasons real quickly. Um, they're in plentiful supply. They are an iconic item that every American, for instance, owns between six to eight pair on average. You're going to find hard pressed to find that with any other clothing item other than maybe like socks. Um, and they've been around forever. They sell for a decent profit. You can find them usually cheaply. Um, and there's a lot of different brands you can specialize in if you want. Uh, all those reasons, really. And they're, and they're not hard to store. They don't take up a tremendous amount of room. They, they, they don't really take up as much room as a shirt unless you fold the shirt up kind of tight. Um, but, you know, if you think about a shirt hanging, you know, you need vertical room. But jeans don't really take up a lot of space. So those are all the reasons. $2 for Diesel and Lucky's at Savers, Bobby Rock says. Man, for True Religion and Diesel and Lucky, that's awesome. You'll make great money on all three of those brands. That's that's cool. Good job. Uh, let's see. Uh, fun says, got to finish watching later. Cool, fun. We'll see you later. Um, what else? Do you buy jeans on eBay? I do not, Henry. Somebody keeps asking me about that. Like, hey, are you going to... I need to research that a little better. Um, I probably could, but I've got some ideas about that, but it's got to make mathematical sense to me, and I think it's going to be tricky to find a lot, but I think there's some time there to source when I'm not outsourcing. So maybe I'll start doing that, like maybe right before bedtime, I'll just jump on for 30 minutes and try to see what I can buy and... Um, what one or two brands do you find sell best? Well, Susanna, that's a great question. Um, that kind of depends on your definition of sell best. My definition of sell best would be which ones are the most likely to sell in a reasonable amount of time, not necessarily for the most money, because that's a different question in my, in my eyes. Um, I think Levi's and American Eagle have to be at the top of the list. I would probably even say American Eagle is, I don't know. I think American Eagle for me outsells Levi's in terms of sell-through rate. I don't have it broken down by sell-through rate for jeans because that's a little tricky to measure the way I do it. And, and I'm not going to either. But in that seller resource on eBay, you can find that. Um, if you're going to ask in terms of profit, that would be your higher-end brands like a, like a True Religion or a Diesel or so on. A vintage Levi's from way back when, if you can find them, you know, good luck with that. Um, but yeah, uh, Miss Me sells tremendously, but I, you're just not going to find enough of those. I mean, you can find Levi's and American Eagle everywhere, everywhere. But, you know, brands like Miss Me, True Religion, D Diesel, for instance, you're just not going to find them in volume. You're going to find them, but you're not going to find them in volume. And in True Religion, you do have the fake issue, maybe a little less with Diesel, but you do have some some fake uh, some fake issues there. You have to be on the lookout for. Uh, that's interesting. I like that brand for myself, but didn't know they sold well. American Eagle. Yeah, look around when you're out walking. You're talking about you're checking out people's rear end to see what they're wearing. Count how many American Eagles you see. Go to like the mall, for instance. You're gonna see a ton of them. I mean, and they sell, you know, I mean, you're not going to make a tremendous amount of money on them. I'm not saying that, but American Eagle is a good brand. It sells really well, in my opinion. Um, you know, just, just check that out. So, uh, Crafty says, Miss Me sells for 20 bucks, my Goodwill. Oh, they love their Miss Me. Okay, Crafty, but here's what I'm going to tell you. You're going to find some Miss Me's worked back into the racks because there's going to be some employees there in the back who are lazy or don't know, or don't care, and they're just going to shove them on the regular rack. So still keep an eye out for them. I understand sometimes they're going to pull them, but I've seen them pull all kinds of nonsense to the, the love rack or the love case, as I like to call them, you know, because Goodwill's so in love with them. They, they price them so high that you'd have to be an idiot to buy them for that much unless they're just something extraordinary. But, you know, they'll, they'll stick like, you know, Massimo brands, you know, from Target on there. I mean, it's just weird because they're because they're new or something. You know, it, it, they do all kinds of weird things. 
Uh, been finding a lot of Kuji. Ah, uh, Kuji. Kuji might be my favorite brand overall. Kuji is awesome. You'll probably get some over. Here's the one thing I'm gonna say on Kuji, guys. A little pro tip: make sure you use global shipping, the the global shipping program, or you offer international sales if you sell Kuji, because I have probably sold half of my Kujis overseas. Um, now you're gonna sell them here too. Don't get don't get me wrong, but I sell a decent percent of Kujis overseas, um, and so I think it's a maybe a bigger brand in some. It's an Australian brand originally, but there might be some more interest in it overseas. So keep that in mind. All right, guys, I'm going to go to the stats here in a second, but we got 25 people watching. Thank you guys for that. If you like the video so far or you're liking it even more later down when you're watching it after this broadcast ends, please hit the like button. I do appreciate it, and it lets me know I'm doing a good job and lets um, YouTube know uh, the same. So let's go do a screen share. I'll show you my last two days, which have been uh, pretty darn good. So let me go to my um, screen share here. Hang on one second, guys. I'm just going to open this door. <clears throat> All right. So let's go to uh, yesterday and the day before. All right. So you can see um, two days ago, uh, we, we bought the 79 and we spent, it's funny, we bought 79 both days in a row. Isn't that funny? Um, just, kind of the way it worked out but and we sold 11 which was 272 gross so really good day um, estimated net of about 112 bucks after expenses and so on so good day there and then the next day yesterday Tuesday the 4th we uh, had a not great listing day only got six up I'm a slacker I admit it did sell 12, which was a, another great day, 299, basically a $300 day for $124 net. So let me show you our um, our month. This is what I was excited about, guys. So here's October. So through four days, we've already grossed $1,059 in sales. That's pretty sick. Um, and the reason I say that is because I'm gonna do a little math here and say, uh, four divided by 31 is, well, let's see, four goes into 31 four times, uh, 7.75 times. Yeah. So if we kept that pace up, I don't know if we will all month. I'm not going to be that optimistic, but that would be an $8,200 month guys, just in jeans. I had to let that sink in for a minute. An $8,200 month, just in jeans. That's pretty sick. Um, I don't know that it'll keep at this pace. And and the profit on that would be great too because, I mean, because of what we've made so far, just assuming we keep the same average, um, 436, and that would be a $3,379 net profit on 8,200 bucks in sales. That would be a phenomenal month, um, I think, and easily the best month I've had. I mean, there's plenty of sellers who don't do $8,200, period, on eBay and do quite well. But to do that in Justin Jeans would be sick. Um, that would also mean selling about 300 pair, which that's not that bad. I mean, that's basically just over 10 a day. I think that's doable. But I don't know if these numbers are whole, but man, if the rest of the month is like the first four days, the first you know 12% of the month, whatever it is, I am going to be one happy camper. So um, anyway... Um, I just thought I'd share that with you guys. Hopefully, we're off to a great start. I hope it continues, and uh, we're going to do everything we can to make sure it does, and just, you know, we own our results, or we own our, our effort. So, um, anyway, so I'd share that with you. So, that's where we're at. Um, let's see. Uh, Suzanne says, I'm afraid of fake Kuji. I tend to not pick them up because I'm afraid of fakes. I don't. Mike, you, you might chime in on this if you're still on the show. I don't think Kuji is a very faked brand. Um, I'm sure it, it has been faked, but I don't think it's faked that often. I don't think that's really much of a concern with that brand, Suzanne. I'd be very surprised. You can always go to that Authentic Forum. Um, I'm going to type that in the chat. AuthenticForum.com. Uh, if you have any question about jeans, um, 
whether or not they're real or not, that's a great form to go to. And they have a lot of people in there, and they have guides as well. And the guides are pretty good. I mean, again, Coogee is just not a brand that's going to sell for enough new that people are going to fake it to that large of an extent. So I wouldn't worry about it. I'd be surprised if you picked up a fake Coogee. It's possible, but I just don't think it's that likely. Crafty says there's big ways to see if they're fake or not. Yeah, the way, the way they're made, the labels, the sewing. Yeah, I mean, if it looks odd, cheap, off, off center, uneven, those are things that are usually going to indicate a fake. Um, the tags are different than what you see online, but I don't know. Uh, Mr. Sadie says, I like to pay my eBay bill every two, every week or two. Seems easier to part with. LOL, any thoughts? Well, now here's the thing I'm going to say to you about that, Mr. Sadie. I, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, first of all. I pay every month, but the reason, if you pay every two weeks, that means twice a year, you're going to have three payments within one month, right? Because every year, if you pay bi-weekly, two months out of the year, you're going to have three payments, just the way that the dates fall. So consider that. I, I don't know how you do your bills and so on. Most people do them monthly. But... And, and that might throw you off. It, it might be, you know, it's only, a, I don't know how you, again, if you, if you do your month, your bills monthly, you're going to have to, you're going to have to remember that twice a year, you're going to, you're going to pay extra, basically, a, you know, a one third payment extra for, you know, two months out of the year. So I, I don't know, but I just have it all come out of PayPal and I just kind of keep an eye on it. It's on your seller hub. You can see, you know, how many, uh, it's how much is going to come out and what your balance is and just go by that. And I just always leave enough in PayPal so that it's not a problem. Um, I don't even worry about it anymore. Honestly, I just let it do its thing and do it automatically. And just one more, more thing off the plate, but there's no problem doing it every two weeks. I mean, I, I, there's no, it's, it's the same amount of money over the course of a year. It just, it matters if you want, if you're doing your bills monthly or not and you're and how you're pulling money out, moving money around. But that's my thoughts. Um, Vino says anyone else in South Florida waiting for the hurricane? Wow. Um, yeah. I mean, he's saying, uh, or she, he or she, I'm not sure. Not projected to hit Miami. It looks like that hurricane is going to scrape up the coast. So you guys take care. You know, it's been a while since the hurricanes hit the United States over 10 years since a big one has hit. So, you know, be cautious guys. I mean, those things are no joke. Um, it's not just a little wind and rain. <laughs> it's a whole nother level. Um, and the storm surge as well. If you live on the coast can be, that's what kills people is water rising. It's not the wind and getting, you know, it's, it's the storm surge. Um, crafty says I pay weekly and like seeing high numbers means high sales. Yeah. Hey, if that psychologically boosts you, do it. You know, that's real. That's as real as anything if it gives you a psychological boost. So why not, guys? Um, but, yeah, so we are really happy here with the results so far this month. No complaints at all. I mean, if I do an $8,200 a month, I'm going to dance a jig right here on right here on camera. And I don't even know how to dance a jig or how to dance, but I'll do it. So that would be an awesome month. I would be really ecstatic. So I'm going to do my part and get a lot more listings up. I don't know if you guys can see back there. Karin's got probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's probably 80, 90 pair of jeans there that she's photographed, and I need to get listed. So um, I've done some today, but there's a lot more to go. Like today, the rest of the day is going to be a listing day. And um, just getting these listings up, just, um, you know, pumping up the totals. The totals are pretty high, by the way, too, by the way. I'm at uh, 765 is my average for this month so far. So that's already up about 8 or 9% over last month. And that number is going to climb because I'm really going to be pushing out all these teams. And there's about, oh, five bags full down on the floor you probably can't see that still need to be, um, that still need to be listed. So, yeah, great day here, guys. I hope it's going well for you, too. And, um, man, just just excited about this month and excited about results and excited about genes and just there's no negatives. <laughs>
Uh, Sadie says it's ironic those jeans are sitting there and you're wearing plaid shorts. I know. I, I went out today and there was just a cool breeze and I went, man, it might be time just for the pants. Now at this point, it wasn't cold or anything like that, but I went, ah, that breeze blows. It's just a little cool. So I'm ready for the cool weather, as you guys have heard me say. All right. Well, listen, I think that's going to about do it for today. We've been on for about 40, 40 minutes or so, which is awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I would love it if you'd hit the like button on the way out and leave me a comment down below if you're watching this afterwards and I try to answer all of them and you know consider subscribing to Prof Sales and by the way there's gonna be a new show name tomorrow so it's gonna be a new name for this show but still you know same format and so on but uh, Car and I came up with something a little bit longer or a little bit a little while ago and I think it's, it'll be kind of a cool catchy name so anyway Hope you guys will enjoy it. And um, <laughs> Sadie says he thought I had a tea time. <laughs> yeah, uh, I need to. I need to learn golf. All right, but that's going to do it for now, guys. I do appreciate it. And you know, I love you guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Be positive. Be energetic. Own your results. Own your effort. And go out there and make it happen. Whatever you need to do, that do it better today than you did yesterday, and it'll be even better tomorrow. All right, so that's going to do it for today. And as always, this is Prof Sales saying good sales to you.